guys, thank you for watching. I'm here to tell you something about the cruise I made just recently in July 2024 on a Costa cruise. This video will contain some information and images I recorded myself and at the end of the video I'll be talking about the disadvantages and advantages and leave you with some tips. Our cruise went from Turkish Istanbul to Greek islands Mykonos, Crete, Rhodos, Santorini and the city of Athens. Now there's also the possibility to board in Athens and from there travel to Istanbul. It depends on how you booked your trip. First things first, just so you know, I'm Dutch and booked this trip via Stipreisen, which is part of Corendon. I'll have a link ready for you in the description of this video. Also my pronunciation of some words may differ since English is not my first language, that's just a heads up. This video will take you to my overall cruise experience itself and not so much the destinations. So here we go. First of all, let me tell you that I paid 3,800 euros for the whole holiday, including the My Drinks deal. I'll tell you more about this later. I traveled with my partner, so it was the two of us and we booked a cabin with a balcony. We stayed at a hotel in Istanbul for two nights, which next to the flights was included in the booking. Arriving at the dock, there were time slots for entering the ship, which at first we thought was a bummer since our arrival at the ship was way earlier than our time slot was. However, after arriving at the ship, everyone was immediately welcome on board. Cabins weren't ready yet, but at least we were able to get a good look at the ship and even have a taste of our first drink. We got our Costar card immediately when we boarded the ship. And after arriving, you easily connect your Costa card with your credit card and it will be effective immediately. I connected my Costa card with Revolut to keep an eye on my spending with no extra costs. Also with the Revolut card, which is either digital or just a plain plastic card, I was able to pay on all the destinations while having a good view on my spendings with the Revolut app. You'll find a link in the description of the video. Having a look at the Costa card, there is some information on there. First, there will be your name, cabin number, dates of traveling on the ship, your dedicated restaurant and dinner time, and your drink deal. Just so you know, your dinner time can be either at 7 or at 9.30, and it is possible to change that at the restaurant itself. There are multiple drink deals to enjoy, including my soft drinks, my drinks, my drinks plus, and my drinks young. We chose my drinks and did not regret that for a second. When you enjoy your my drinks package, you can order basically any soda, cocktail, spirit, or warm drink you like. There are some ex exceptions though. At any bar, it is possible to scan a QR code with your smartphone to see which drinks are and are not included in your package. For example, here are some screenshots of the actual menu. We chose my drinks, which includes drinks with meals at the bar and cocktails, but not the premium drinks or drinks from the mini bar in your room. Those are included in My Drinks Plus. My Drinks includes beers, non alcoholic drinks, hot beverages, chocolate bar drinks, wines by the glass, certain whiskies, and a diversity in liquors. There are also a lot of cocktails and mixed drinks to choose from. I paid 480 euros for the two of us and trust me, even if you take a few cocktails, it is worth including this in your booking. You can choose a lot of good cocktails and the brands the bartenders use are A brands, so don't worry about knockoff tastes, it's the real thing. There's also the My Drinks Plus package, which includes every brand you'd like. When you book the cruise, you stay on a full board basis, including breakfast, lunch and dinner, so no worries on starving. When you order your drinks, your card will be scanned by the bartender. Eventually, you will be only billed for items that are not included in your package, which sounds like an easy mistake, but that didn't happen with us. It's just that easy. There's also a recommended Costa app. You can just download that in your app store. The app provides all the information you need about the dinner for that day, all the entertainment on board and the times of arrival and departure. It is possible to set an alarm for every activity you'd like to join. And let me tell you, there is a lot to do on board. I'll tell you more about that later. 
I thought this app was very handy, although most important information can only be viewed when on the ship. When you're out having a sunny time on one of the islands, the information that's most important to you isn't viewable. A very nice and transparent feature in the app is that you can see all the expenses you have made during your time on board. It's immediately viewable after buying or booking something like an excursion. Aside from the app, there's also your paper mail. Next to your cabin door, you will daily receive information on paper as well. It's called the Oggi a Bordo, which basically means on board today. On there, you'll see the highlights and full schedule of entertainment for the next day. It will be printed in your language. Our balcony cabin was very comfortable. I would recommend a balcony since the room feels more spacious and you can always enjoy the excellent views. The balcony has two chairs and a small table as well and a light for the evenings if you need it. The bathroom is very small but still good enough and there's a mini bar in the room which for my drinks plus uses is included but is also handy for cooling waters or other drinks. There's a small TV as well, but we honestly never used it since we were always out enjoying whatever fun was happening on the ship. As I said, there is a lot to do on board, not only organized entertainment or drinking your sorrows away. We also used the gym three times, it was very spacious and there's a lot of workout equipment. It can be very crowded at times, so best thing to do is go very early or at times when other passengers are enjoying time off the ship. There's a spa and sauna to use as well. There's also the swimming pools you can enjoy, which there are two of, and each bigger pool has two bubble baths as well, containing warm water and non-stop bubbles. Getting the best spot near the pool is quite a challenge, since passengers tend to reserve sun baths with their towels. Unfortunately, these things do not only happen at hotel pools, it's the same on this ship. So it's either a bed in the hot sun or an available chair in the shadow. The pool areas were mostly quite crowded with folks and their children, so we mostly try to avoid it and look up a quieter place on the ship, which is actually quite possible. So, as said earlier, there is a big range of entertainment on board. You will be seeing the same faces over and over again in different roles. Because of that, I noticed the entertainment staff worked very, very hard to accomplish quite a tiring schedule. They dance, play with kids, host parties, etc. The Im images you're looking at right now is from the second night departing from Mykonos to celebrate its beauty. It was a hell of a party on deck with laser beams, fireworks and club music. You can also audition for the Voice of the Sea, in which you complete with other passengers and eventually can win a contestant placement in the official show later on that week. It all came across as very professional and well organized. There are many shows and venues all over the ship. We had a blast participating in the silent disco on the deck. Abba Mania. Queen Mania. Dance nights and many, many other cool parties. During the day, there was a lot of kid stuff and exercise possibilities as well. There is also a casino that is only open in the evenings. You can use cash money to operate the machines and it will be transferred to your Costa card when you finish. Quite easy. Almost all the food is included in your stay and especially the dinners are very well organized. Once again also the restaurant staff works very hard to make your stay unforgettable. You won't forget your service face anytime soon after the cruise. For lunch and dinner it's possible to choose a four course meal each having three options to choose from. And even if the three choices aren't your flavor you can always choose one of the great classics instead. I was very surprised by all the choices and beautiful dishes. Wine is also included so you can enjoy white or red and glasses of still or sparkling water. We only had the organized lunch on our full day at sea, since we were on islands during lunchtime every day. 
Dinner was every night for us since we didn't want to miss it. You are seated at the exact table for dinner every night at the same time and this table will be mostly joined with other but always the same guests. Every night during dinner the staff gives away a dance performance in the restaurant. Not my cup of tea but most passengers really enjoyed it. If you miss breakfast, lunch or dinner times there is always the buffet near the pool. The possibility to choose and eat whatever you want is obviously great but unlike the restaurants you will get the all-inclusive hotel vibe which mostly means getting in line for a plate and less fancy surroundings while eating and drinking from plastic tableware. And sometimes even the enjoyment quote, quote, of a guest in swimming gear passing by. Getting off and on the ship is quite easy. Your Costa card will be scanned and your belongings as well and that's it. In Mykonos it took a little longer and for example Santorini you will be taken to the shore by smaller boats which takes a little longer as well. Now there are loads of excursions to book even before you leave from home. We didn't book anything and didn't miss it as well. We figured we'd go our own way on the islands which worked out pretty well. It was recommended by Costa to book a transfer from the ship to the center of the islands. So in Mykonos we did exactly that. Then we discovered there was a way cheaper transfer to use when we exited the ship. And later on we used mostly Uber to complete our transfers and we found that was the best way to explore. Public transfer is an option as well. If you need a guide to tell you information about where you are you might as well book an excursion. But personally we thought it was way too hot this season to follow a guide around town. I have to say I was amazed by the high price of Wi-Fi on board. I really think it should be included but it definitely is not. It costs 119 euros excluding a 3 euro account fee. So that's 122 euros for 7 days and only for one device which is absurd in my opinion. It isn't an option to use your European network since you'll be on international waters and that'll cost you big time. I have however found a satisfying solution in my international travel eSIM which I use for work. During the trip on sea to my surprise the eSIM worked quite well. Most of the times it worked and I could look up stuff online, send pictures or have a chat. I use Eralo for that which is accessible for everyone and you'll find a discount link in the description of this video. So eventually having experienced the cruise obviously we found some advantages and disadvantages about the whole trip. Here are some pluses and minuses of our trip. The pluses. A definite plus is the availability of food and drinks. If you missed a meal at a restaurant you can always get something at the buffet. There are also some paid options like pizza, fried snacks and sushi. On the Aji Abordo it is possible to look up the exact times for paid and included meals. Drinks are always available. And within your stay it includes one bottle of water per person per day. You can refill glasses but no bottles of water all day long with ice if you wish. The entertainment is great. There is so much to do for everyone. I was amazed at how the entertainment crew was always busy entertaining their guests. The ship is clean, cabins are clean, wherever you go you can always see someone cleaning, that's a big plus. The cocktails are beautiful and very tasty. Bar staff makes an effort to complete a beautiful cocktail for you. Always including a napkin, straw, ice, etc. Using A brands and generous pouring of alcohol. There is a lot of choice in beverages, from a nice shot of Sambuca to a tropical daiquiri. The surround sound of the entertainment like bands, singers etc is remarkably good. When there are several nearby performances you won't be bothered by the sound of a nearby venue. And then there are some minuses. Arriving at the ship your passport is confiscated for the whole cruise due to legal issues with Turkey and Greece. I didn't feel comfortable leaving my passport but there's no declining it. I thought some of the costs for recommendations are misleading. It was told that you need a transfer from the ship to the town centers but in many cases it's easy and cheaper to arrange it yourself. I think Costa could do better with the inclusion package. 
If they would increase the price of the cruise but include everything like drinks and food, it would never be a question whether something is in or excluded. That would make it a lot easier for passengers with no surprises on the bill when the cruise ends. Although the cabin was very comfortable to stay in, it was very noisy. Also, our curtains didn't close properly, so we woke up very early because of that. We didn't like that all passengers had to prepare their suitcases and put them outside the door on the evening before the boarding. I guess it makes things easier for luggage handlers, but for passengers it's simply uncomfortable. If you do book an excursion, it's not possible to book a time. It's done for you. Could be early, could be late, you never know until it's confirmed. It's an Italian cruise company, but therefore all the entertainment is very Italian-minded. Not so much the music, but the hosts are Italian with little English to add. I thought that was a big minus. And as mentioned earlier, the Costa app only fully works on the ship itself. Swimming pool reservations by means of the towels and costs of Wi-Fi. And finally, I need to mention the friendliness of reception and sometimes bar staff. There's a hierarchy going on and as a passenger, you will notice it. The managing positions were mainly held by Italians, though we experienced not them being the friendliest. When we went to reception with a small complaint, they weren't very nice in their response and also at bars you can be ignored or just be treated less nice. The restaurant and cleaning staff, however, were very friendly and helpful. And here are some tips for you to make your trip more comfortable. Bring duct tape to properly close your curtains and or use an iPad. Bring earplugs to avoid getting irritated by all the noise surrounding you. Use an international eSIM to be able to get online on sea. Use Revolut for easily paying with card on all destinations without extra costs. Choose from the dinner menu before you go to dinner. It will make it a lot easier for the waiting staff and for yourself as well. On the last day when you're still on the ship, download your bill since the app won't let you access after you have disembarked. So that's all folks. I hope I covered most of what you wanted to hear about my Costa Cruise experience. Thank you for watching and listening. Bye.